Well, good afternoon. Is everybody awake after lunch? No, <laughs> not me. <laughs> John, I think your mic's off. This one. No, no, that's, that's on for Chris. This one's not on? No, no. here. Turn it on. Better? Now, now talk. Still, still good? Ah, there we go. All right, thank you. I'm, I'm just curious, since we organized this thing, like, show of hands, who's getting a lot of value from this, from this conference? Okay, good. A lot, a lot of people. That was just, like, 30-second poll. Um, will, will folks want to come back next year? Uh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Good. That's what we want to hear. So fuel strategies, um, this is something that it's taken, what, John, you and I, we've been playing with fuel for a year, yeah. every bit of a year, and there, there's a lot of myths as to how fuel works at FedEx, how you're reimbursed, um, how that supplement works, how IFTA works. We're going to dive into a lot of that stuff today. Uh, so this is kind of the fuel primer, right? Um, what would you add to that, John? Well, everybody knows you spend a, a, a metric ton on fuel, and there's some really interesting nuances about the way you can manage your fuel costs, and it's one of the big levers you can, you can do to find margin you may not know exists. And we're going to show you how big some of these numbers can be. It's significant margin. So um, I guess first we've, we've got, if you want to advance that slide there, Matt. Matt's having a technical. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. So here's kind of what, what we're going to cover. Um, so how does FedEx actually reimburse for fuel, right? How's my supplement actually calculated? We're going to look at, uh, am I doing, like, how do I know if I'm do, doing good or bad? with my fueling decisions in my fleet. We're gonna cover uh, how, how do I save money on retail fuel. So you know, unfortunately, it'd be nice if you could always buy fuel at the FedEx hub, but unfortunately you can't. So you, you have to buy uh, in a lot of cases at truck stops. We're gonna dive into IFTA. We're gonna do a very short IFTA primer. And what is the impact of my fuel economy on my P&L? So that's kind of the agenda for today. So I think the first question is, is how does FedEx reimburse for fuel, John? Yep. So everybody knows, if we can go to the next slide, Matt, when you look at your settlement, there's this column labeled fuel, and that's the fuel supplement. That's the money you're getting above a buck and a quarter per gallon. And people think that's all you're getting, but actually the way it works is, if you look at it, there's money in your VMR. And this is something that I have to explain to folks constantly because they say, oh, I got... 20 grand in, in fuel supplement and I spent 30 grand, I don't know how they come up with this math. Well, there's a big piece of, of reimbursement buried in the VMR. So you're actually making less per trip in the VMR calc because 19 and a half cents of that goes towards fuel. And if you were to look at Schedule C on the next slide, we took all the data from Schedule C where they have the fuel reimbursement table and we plotted it. And it is a straight line. So as fuel's going up, you're getting more. It's not exponential, it's not curved but it stops at a buck and a quarter. So if fuel were magically to be $1 a gallon, you'd actually be making out like a bandit because they don't have a way to take money out of your VMR. Not that it's gonna be a buck a gallon, but when you look at what am I getting back for fuel, you have to do the math right and you have to add that 19 and a half cents per mile. And, and for those of you wondering how I get to the 19 and a half, it's a dollar and a quarter divided by the 6.41 miles per gallon that FedEx assumes you're getting. And this is an important point because a lot of people think you're getting paid based on how much fuel you bought. You're not. You're getting paid per mile. And that's one of the big places where we'll show you later. You can really, pardon the pun, drive a truck through that hole and make some money. Yeah, so FedEx, and, and this is a really, thing, a really important thing to put in your mind. They always assume that you're getting 6.41 miles a gallon when they look at fuel supplements. So if you're getting over that, you're actually making money on the fuel supplement right, because they reimbursed you for 6.4 miles per gallon, you got seven miles per gallon, the truck actually burned less fuel than FedEx assumed that it burned, right, and we're gonna talk more about that later. The, the other point I wanna make is that this VMR has this $1.25 a gallon built into it, right, so FedEx is kind of making the assumption that one, fuel will never be less than $1.25 a gallon. If it is, you would get no fuel supplement and you'd be making out, like John says, like a bandit, you'd be paying less than they ever expect fuel to cost. So you would get that spread. But I think what, what's worth noting here is that, I mean, that's, that's actually a pretty important number, right? Mm -hmm. In the supplement, and that's, you notice you get no, no surcharge at 125. And then as 
fuel price grows on that chart, right, you get more. So Yeah, and, and if you were to do the arithmetic, and, and let's just pretend you actually got 6.41 miles per gallon and you bought all FedEx fuel, in theory, you would say, oh, I should break even. And if you look at just the fuel supplement, you're like, I'm still paying for fuel. But if you add the 19 and a half cents yes. per mile to the fuel supplement, you would then see, I got 10,000 total in fuel and I spent 10,000 even. But of course, if you were to get better than 6.41, you'd get 10,000 and you'd spend like maybe 9,000. Yep. And we'll get into those numbers with a spreadsheet here soon. Yeah. So then I think the next question that we've got is how is my fuel supplement actually calculated? So it's pretty, pretty Byzantine the way FedEx presents this, but whenever you buy fuel, you get a fuel ticket in your settlement. If you go further down in the settlement, there's a whole section on fuel receipts used for variable mileage reimbursement. And in the example we've got, uh, these are some fuel tickets. Stand, stand up and point at it, John. Let's yeah. make it clear. So here are fuel tickets, and you paid $318 for this tank of, of FedEx fuel, okay? And below that, you have a retail at a TA, okay? FedEx is not going to give you full credit for the retail. So in this case, this is from down below, they say 435, I'll bet you that this fuel was actually closer to $480, that fill up. And what FedEx is doing, as explained in Schedule C, is they're looking at the zip code where the fuel was bought, and they're going to the oil price information service, the OPUS table, to find out what the wholesale cost for that zip code was on that day. And they're only giving you credit and reimbursing you as if you bought wholesale fuel. So there's this misconception that if I pay higher for retail, I'll get paid more by FedEx. Uh-uh. They don't give you any bonus for that. They knock it back to what wholesale should have been. So once they figure out, okay, your average was $3.13 for this truck this week, they go to this table and they say, all right, it's between $3.05 and $3.15. Your reimbursement rate is going to be $29.09 cents per mile. So that table, this number, if we go to the next slide. So let me interject here because another way to think about this, I always like to play devil's advocate, is whatever the truck stop has priced the fuel at above Opus, right, wholesale market, you're eating that as a contractor. You're not getting reimbursed for that. So if Flying J has a 90 cent a gallon margin on that fuel, you just paid 90 cents out of your pocket for the privilege of fueling it, Pilot or Flying J, right? Before you leave that slide, you're talking zip code. Is it the zip code of the gas station? And if so, the top line here doesn't have a zip code. Is that, is that a it, it does. It was a zero. Oh, Connecticut's a 06. It's a hub. So that they'll use zip code or state, either, either one. Yeah. But remember, for FedEx, they're not knocking you back. It's what you paid because they claim that's wholesale. Right. I didn't see it was a hub. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that... No, no, this is perfect. When you go back to your settlement, remember this is 29.09 cents. If you look at your settlement and you go to the line haul trips, next slide please. We've graded out because this is somebody else's data, but there's a column for fuel. And you'll notice 29.09 cents for this truck all the way through, okay? And a little aside, if you ever see a zero here, you just got screwed and you gotta fix that. Because that means that FedEx couldn't figure out what your average fuel cost was for the truck. So their algorithm said, I guess we can't do the math, so you get nothing. And the most common reason that that happens is that truck had a fuel card in it with a different truck's number. So they think you didn't buy fuel that So week. watch your temp cards. Yeah. Pay careful attention to your temp cards. Because if you move them around, wrong truck number on the fuel card, that truck number isn't dispatched on the trip, you're not going to get a fuel supplement. And there's not a good way, John, unless this has changed over the last few weeks, there's not like a process for you to request the fuel supplement from FedEx. You kind of have to call the station manager, roll with the punches, and try to get that fuel supplement back. It's not like a missing trip where there's kind of a process and a form. Uh, there's not a form, but what you do is you, you supply the, the, this data from the trips showing the zeros, and then you actually supply them with the fuel tickets from the other part of the settlement. You say, this should have been for this truck. And they will spot check it, because if that truck's a solo in Connecticut, and you give them fuel tickets from New Mexico, they'll, they'll red flag it and send it right back to you and say, not a chance. We're not using those. Yeah. Um, but they will do 
all of that recalculation. And if you think about it today at prices, it's like 60 cents a mile, the fuel supplement. And if you've got a team truck that just did 4,000 miles and you had the wrong number in there, it's like $2,400 in a week on one truck because of that screw up. And yes, our software will catch this for you and help you submit it, cheap ad. You don't need it. All you have to do is look for a zero here. There should never be a zero here unless we get down to that less than $1.25 a gallon someday. <laughs> yeah. Not happening. Yeah, slim chance. Right. So what's the next topic we got? Yeah. All right, so if you buy retail fuel, you will get a higher reimbursement. I think we already debunked this myth. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not the truth. Correct. Absolutely. So how do you know if you're doing well or not? You can do all the math we're about to show you by hand yourself. It's not that hard. But going back to what we talked about, you want to look at the P&L. So can you go to the next slide, please? Base fuel, 19.5 cents per mile. Easy enough to look at your total miles, right? Fuel supplement, you just add it up from the settlement, right? The fuel, the mileage per and, and, and the number of miles, you add that up. So in this example, you've got this much in reimbursement that you got out of the settlement. This is what the fuel expense was. This contractor in this week made $3,800 on fuel. That's the way you need to think about it. You need to think about it as a, as a P&L just for fuel, and you need to manage to that number. And we'll show you a little later what the distribution looks like for different contractors, but it's a real number, and this is a very big lever that you can pull. Right, Flint? Yeah. It's, fuel, fuel economy is probably the biggest lever because that's really what primarily drives this, this and the fuel economy and outside fuel purchases. So we talked about how you eat that margin at Pilot or Flying J, right? So that's going to get built into this. And then if your trucks are... are doing well above 6.41 miles per gallon again, you're gonna be helping yourself make money on fuel. So like this, in this example, $3,800, right? Pretty good, this is money made on the, on the fuel. Four cents a mile they added to their margin. Right. And so in such a tight margin environment, pennies, pennies margin gain, four cents is kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. If you go to the next slide, Matt, you can actually then break it out if you want to because this number is essentially, how much did I lose by buying retail yep. fuel that week? Right here. So the difference between the wholesale and the retail cost for this contractor, they did a great job with all that fuel. It was almost all FedEx fuel. They lost $908. This is always gonna be a negative number. The rest is attributable to the fact that they ran 6.85 miles per gallon, dispatch miles per gallon, right? If you're bobtailing, you're not getting paid for it, so that doesn't count. So again, because this is above 6.41, this is why you see 4,700 take away from it the retail average, and that's your actual P&L for fuel. So the actual way that you add this up, John, correct me if I'm wrong, if I misstep here, but if you're going to do this in Excel or by hand, you take all your fuel transactions, that's your cost of fuel for the truck, right? And then you take all your, your fuel supplement revenue, right? And we're, we're going to just subtract these things, right? So and in your 19 cents a mile that's built into the VMR. So you're adding fuel supplement to the 19 cents per mile in the VMR equals your total fuel revenue minus your total fuel cost. Yep, question? Yeah, what? So this 19.5 is interesting. Why, why would they put that in the VMR? Why not just give 100% reimbursement on fuel? I mean, do you know the rationale for well, That's news to me. I didn't know there was money, fuel money in the VMR. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know their exact rationale for this, but it's pretty common across the trucking industry as a whole, like a lot of times you'll set a floor for fuel and a, you know, a lot of fuel surcharges. So I'm guessing at some point whenever they did all the math and put this together, they thought $1.25 was the magic number. Um, and, and you may have somebody at FedEx who say, we're not putting anything into the right. VMR. We just don't reimburse for the first dollar and a quarter. Right. But if you want to actually do intelligent math and have a good P&L number you can manage to, you have to adjust it. Because otherwise, it's just as meaningless to try to look for a P&L if you don't include that 19 and a half cents. Does that make sense? No. Yeah, e either way, if they say, well, we don't reimburse for less than $1.25, I mean, it's, it's assumed, right? right? It's an expense, so. So... Those of you who saw my presentation earlier today, this is a slight reprise. I want to show you the range that we see for our customers because it's kind of interesting to, to look at it. These are charts over six months for three different contractors. 
The one on the left, the average that they made was 11 cents per mile in net fuel. The They're one on the right work. with the green circle, John. Right. Or yeah, your left, my right. Man, I'm struggling. It's <laughs> afternoon. It's after lunch. <laughs> These guys, I'd say, are fair to middling. They're losing about three cents a mile. This is a real case. They were losing 30 cents a mile just on fuel. And then they started managing to it, reducing their exposure to retail fuel, working on their miles per gallon. They got it much better, but over a six month period, it was 19 cents a mile. They were taking a sharp stick in the eye every week. And I mean, if you're complaining about only a two cent increase from FedEx, imagine if you're giving back 19 cents a mile, right? So yeah, Matt, Jim, question? Within our app, yeah. it's in the new settlement viewer, which you've got. Okay. We'll make sure we show it to you later. Okay. Um, Matt, can you show the distribution slide next, I think? Okay. So from a cents per mile, the net P&L, this is in our system, all the contractors we have, and we've got a lot of data in there. This is how it breaks out. The big one's kind of centered around about penny loss. But there are contractors up here making that dime. And then you've got a long tail down here losing as much as 20 cents on average. Now, there's some seasonality to it. You know, winter time you get less, less MPG, so you see some fluctuations in this. But it is possible to live in this space. Does this make sense? Does it make sense that it's, it's an oddity that FedEx has created because they're paying you for fuel per mile, not per gallon? So focusing on this, not only just less fuel, but the reimbursement stays up there. So you can create like almost an arbitrage opportunity to take advantage of it and make money on fuel every week if you focus on it. So what are the, what are the three ways to get up into that good group, right? There's kind of three ways, right, John? Biggest is my trucks get great fuel economy. We've got customers that get eight, eight and a half, right? So that's gonna automatically move you into the positive realm. The second one is don't buy retail fuel or buy retail fuel on a third party program that has negotiated rates when you have to, right? And then the third lever, which is much harder to do, but some contractors do it, because that fuel supplement is based on Opus, where you bought the fuel, right? Opus plus tax, because they include tax in that. So I always buy fuel in states with really high fuel tax. I get a higher fuel supplement. Then I run miles in lower tax states. Then I get money back on IFTA. Right? Those are yeah. kind of the three ways to really move up this curve. And we're not going to dig into the third one because it gets really arcane, but it's yeah. out there. It's, it's a good mention. Yep. Matt, what's the next slide? Do we have, how do you save money on retail fuel? And this is. Yeah, this is, I guess this is me. So uh, we've got a fuel program and I've, I did a lot of research on this, on this data. And how do we, w once we realize that you're actually eating that margin at the truck stop, um, what, what do we have? Okay, so. You got the T-check card from FedEx, very unclear what the discounts are that you get from FedEx on the T-check card. It's really not written down. We found this little blurb on the internet, our cost plus participating merchants um, include Speedway, Kangaroo Pantry, Circle K, SAP, Wilco, Quick Trip, Ambest, Quick Fuel. And then if we actually look at your data, John, right? Yep. On what are, what are wait, wait, wait a second, Matt, go back. We're actually seeing these discounts on average. So, right. so when you can get to the T-Chex discount spots, it's unbelievable, the discounts, like two, three cents above wholesale costs, but they're few and far between, but they do exist in there yep. when you use the FedEx T-Chex card. But we don't know where they are, right? And right. they're pretty elusive. So you can go to that next. Oh, go ahead. It's odd that they would negotiate deep, deep, deep discounts and not want to tell you where. Right. And one, one other thing about that, Kyle, so, and I think everybody knows Tim Goff, so he discovered that as well, but then went back to the same locations that he had once gotten a discount and then didn't get a discount. So sometimes it's even pump by pump specific. If you don't fuel at the right pump, you don't get a discount. So. 
Dave, Dave's laughing because we had he had this problem on our fuel program, which we were we were able to fix. When we look at retail margins from our data set, here here's kind of what we see. So state by state, and we have what is the predominant retail price in these two columns. So if we look at the major, so T A Flying J loves. What's the predominant average retail price of fuel in that state? And then what does our wholesale Opus data suggest? And then that's what you're seeing here in margin. So highlighted in red are your highest margin states. So Maryland, the truck stop's got $1.28 in margin on a gallon, right? Virginia, $1.26. And then there's some states that have much, much tighter margins, right? Um, and so it depends on where you fuel and what the fuel market is. But these are, these are the, this is what you're eating every time you go buy fuel and you pay a retail price for it, right? Because you're not getting reimbursed for that truck stop margin. So like this is pretty big on a per gallon basis. If, if you're giving up a dollar a gallon, it's quite a bit. So then I'll, I'll introduce our program like quick plug. Um, we've got a proprietary fuel card. does not work on the FedEx yard, so you still need the T-check card. Um, we automatically sync those transactions back into FedEx on your behalf so that you get your supplement. Uh, and ultimately, it's your card, right? So you'll pay your own fuel bill. It's not going to get deducted from your settlement like you're used to. Uh, but you get to take advantage of a well-defined pattern of where you can fuel and get some really big discounts. And so cost, this, the pricing here is called cost plus not to exceed retail. So what does that actually mean? And I want to dive into that just a little bit because we get a ton of questions about it. So you can jump forward there. All right, so when you look at retail price, and this is just completely made up example data that I put together to, to illustrate this. So over 30 days, your retail price at the truck stop might do something like this. Notice how it's not very, it's, it's not like it's pretty flat and choppy, right? Because they set a retail price, they then leave it set for a few days and then they may readjust it, right? So that's what your retail price does. And then when we add wholesale to this, so what did the truck stop actually pay for the fuel at the rack, right? And so generally speaking, they're gonna have a margin here. So this would be their margin, the green line minus the yellow line. But sometimes wholesale cost does something crazy like six weeks ago, right, the whole Putin-Russia thing going on, wholesale diesel went crazy through the roof. So what, go ahead, Matt. So, right, go one more. So then what do you pay on a cost plus not to exceed retail? Well, we take the wholesale cost plus the set margin that we've negotiated with the truck stop, so you're paying the red line, until wholesale price exceeds retail, and then you pay retail. So you have the advantage of Worst case scenario, you're going to pay retail. Best case scenario, you're going to pay a lot closer to wholesale. So again, assuming that your fuel supplement, you're eating that, that truck stop margin, so you want to get your outside fuel price as close to wholesale as possible. If you kind of extend this example out, so here, right, you're going to pay retail, and, and you can see how this trend follows. When the truck stop has big margin, you get big savings. And so the out there is kind of where your savings is. So again, you've got almost kind of nothing to lose. And our program is very similar to REL's if you use one of these third party programs, because worst case, you'll pay retail. Best case, you'll experience some large savings when there is high margin. So what I'm jumping around, sorry, but so then what we actually see on the program, and this was data, uh, from the week of 7-Eleven, what we actually see on a cost plus program, program in terms of a per gallon savings, and I think if you saw our booth, we had a great big US map with these same numbers on it, but you see a whole lot of cases where you're saving pretty close to a dollar a gallon, 40 cents, 90 cents, 70 cents, whatever it is, on a per gallon basis. So then divide that by your 6.41, right? And you're getting right down to this P&L number where we're actually saving, you know, a dollar twenty divided by six, some rough math, you're saving twenty cents a twenty cents a mile in fuel fuel cost here. One of one of the things I would emphasize, Flint, it's always better price wise to buy FedEx fuel. Always. Yeah, I didn't always. mention it. Always. But yeah. 
there's a lot of cases where you can't. You might have a team truck going cross country and be 200 miles out of the way to get FedEx fuel. You might be in Washington state with no FedEx fuel. You might have situations like that where you just can't get FedEx fuel. If you're going to buy retail and you're not using a fuel purchase program like Flint's or REL's, you are throwing money out the window. Yep. You absolutely need to take advantage of that because otherwise it's just extra costs that you don't need to be paying and you're never going to get reimbursed for it. And, and I would say, and I, I see uh, Greg and Gail from TA sitting back here in the back. TA is a really good partner with us on this fuel program. Now, Love's Flying J won't work with us on this fuel program. They want to they want to keep that margin on that T check card because where do your drivers want to go? They want to go to Love's and Flying J and get their points, right? So you have to. There's a little bit of behavior change that you have to make to you know in order to capture and maximize those discounts. And a, a big way a lot of contractors are doing this is saying, okay, every time I see you buy fuel, because we have to buy some outside fuel, every time I see you buy fuel at a location that is on the discount program that we've got cost plus pricing at, I'm just going to add $10 to your paycheck. Because if you're going to save, let's make up a number, 50 cents a gallon, you're going to buy 100 gallons, you just save 50 bucks. And so it's, you, you can share that sum with the driver to help them make that, uh, that behavior change of fueling where you need them to fuel. So then what, what does this actually mean in the business? Well, let's just take a team truck, just really simple example. You're gonna do 230,000 miles a year. We'll leave our miles per gallon 6.41, what FedEx assumes, and you're gonna purchase 30, almost 36,000 gallons a year. And if you buy 50% of that fuel off the yard, which isn't that uncommon for a team truck, um, you're gonna buy 18,000 gallons off the yard and our average program savings, 7-Eleven, if I just look at the whole country, just take a big broad average, 72 cents a gallon. So your annual savings just from swiping a different piece of plastic at the fuel pump and buying fuel at the right pump, you're gonna save 13 grand a year. So we talk about margins being tight, and we're gonna get a nickel raise, like this is real money, right, for a little bit of additional management. 13,000 a year per team truck is quite a bit of margin. Yeah, for sure. What, what, what is that per mile? Do you have that in your head? Uh, 230,000 by 13,000? I don't know, I can tell about, you. Is that about a nickel? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. I probably should have done that math, huh, John? <laughs> you're always throwing, you're always throwing a curveball at me. Yeah, 5.6. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Thank you. 5.6 cents, yep. You know, just taking advantage of a program that's out there. And I don't think you charge for the program, right? No, the program's com completely free. You pay a one-time $75 setup fee. You get a line of credit at Wex Bank. And then you pay $1.75 every time you use the card to buy fuel. That's because we negotiated most of the margin away. So the truck stops, you know, we, we cover the interchange fees of those cards, that transaction actually settling. So, so we're all hoping you're going to get at least a nickel next month, right? Well, if you're buying retail fuel, you can give yourself a nickel, right? Yeah. Without having to spend money to get it. Is your program sophisticated enough to give you a calculation whether it's cheaper to go to a FedEx place and fuel up or, or to go to a retail? Uh, Rule of thumb, you always want to go to FedEx because FedEx is going to sell the fuel at wholesale plus the cost to haul it to their facility. So you, you, as a rule of thumb, always go to FedEx. Now we do have a price optimizer. If you use our program, you can type in, I need fuel within 50 miles of, I don't know, make it up, right? Uh, Dallas, Texas. And it will, will rank the fuel stations for you and say, okay, these are on the program. This is your best, this is your best price all the way down to the worst. But I'll, I'll tell you, it's almost never, in very rare circumstances, is it better to buy outside fuel than FedEx yard fuel. The only time we've seen that in the data is um, like an outside fuel station has an arbitrarily low price. Like if they haven't updated their price, maybe they are a low volume station and the prices have shot way up, right? Like it's very rare. Like if you're trying to time that and arb that, it's, it's gonna be really hard to do from a management perspective. And it'll just be a, a penny or two to And it's gonna be a huge pain because you gotta send your team truck seven miles from the hub and go, you know, like you're, it's, you're, it's an uphill battle. And when you do pick a third party fuel program, remember we talked about fuel supplement and you have to have your fuel tickets in there so that they can calculate what they're gonna pay you. 
make sure you pick a program that automatically loads your fuel tickets up to FedEx for you. Because yeah. if they don't, it's an absolute pain in the butt to do it manually. Yeah, and, and ours does, I know REL's does. REL's got a very similar program to, to what we offer. And the advantage of theirs is you get one card that also works on the FedEx yards. The downside versus our program is we, we've got a few more chains in the program than they do. So you get a little bit more coverage. Um, and, and the only, I'll tell you, the only downside we've seen with outside fuel is when it comes if to time, sometimes FedEx gets your IFTA right, and sometimes they mess it up, and they'll not count the outside gallons, and then you've got to send them an email and say, hey, this is obviously not right. My trucks didn't get, you know, 45 miles a gallon or whatever the crazy number is that they calculate. And then they say, oh, okay, sorry, we didn't include your outside imported fuel transactions. So then they go back and fix it. And, and just to reiterate, this is a simple example where you're buying half your fuel retail for one truck. Imagine if you were doing this for 10 trucks. Like, that's straight to your bottom line. That's why we obsess over this. Because we see y'all operating and we see the numbers and we can't believe how many y'all are buying retail fuel without a fuel program. And we think you're, you're trying to learn and save money and run your operations better and it's just sitting there for the taking. Any questions on the retail piece before we move on to the next section? Cool. IFTA. Yeah, I'll, I'll take IFTA. So the, the like really simple, I don't even know what we have up here. Okay, so you can just put all those bullets up there, Matt. All right, so the really simple thing about IFTA is each state sets an excise tax on a gallon of diesel fuel, right? So Texas is 20 cents. I think Pennsylvania is like 90 cents. It varies by state. And so that price is built into what you pay at the pump. So that's why sometimes when you cross the state boundary, you know, you see fuel, the fuel price change dramatically when you, when you go over a state border. Well, it's that tax component. It's not that the actual wholesale is all that much different in cost over the six mile, you know, crossing a state boundary. It's the tax. All right, so if the is, you know, the simple example is you fill a truck up here in Texas and then you drive north into Oklahoma and so let's say you're going to Kansas City and you go north into Kansas and you get to Kansas City. Well, you didn't buy fuel in Oklahoma or in Kansas, but you drove on the roads in Oklahoma and in Kansas, right? So those states say, hey, I actually want a piece of that tax revenue that you paid to Texas when you actually filled the truck up. So what IFTA does is at the end of the quarter, you're going to add up all your miles and all your fuel transactions and you're going to put together this filing, right? You make a state filing. And then all the states even up in the IFTA program. So it's the International Fuel Tax Agreement. So Oklahoma says, okay, on average you bought, you know, no gallons here, but you drove a thousand miles here. Therefore, you owe us some money in tax revenue. And in my simple example, Texas would say, oh, well, you bought way more fuel than you drove miles. So we need to even up with Oklahoma. And all that kind of all that stuff happens behind the scenes by you filing the IFTA report. So let's look at some. We'll look at some really simple examples here. So Ohio and Pennsylvania, really good example because Pennsylvania has a really high fuel tax and Ohio has a really low fuel tax. So relatively low, re relatively <laughs> low. Yeah. Rel for the region. Um, so 1300 miles in Ohio, 800 in Pennsylvania, you drove 2,100 miles. You purchased all your fuel in Ohio. So 300 gallons in Ohio and you paid 470 a gallon in Ohio, or I'm sorry, 47 cents a gallon in Ohio and 74 cents a gallon in Pennsylvania. And that's, excise the, tax. That, that's the tax, yeah. Yeah, that's the tax rate. So what did you pay at the pump? Well, in Ohio, of that fuel you bought in Ohio, $141 of that fuel ticket you paid for went to the state in excise tax. But you didn't pay any tax in Pennsylvania. So then IFTA says, okay, what was the average miles per gallon on this truck? And what are the uh, gallons equivalent that you burned in Pennsylvania? And then they say, okay, well, then you multiply that times 74 cents and that's what you owe us, right? So when you actually do your return, Ohio owes $53 of the tax that you paid them. Pennsylvania wants 84 and therefore you're left with a bill of 31, right? So it's simple as evening up miles and gallons between the states. So that's when you get an IFTA bill from FedEx, assuming all your data is right, it means you actually bought fuel in lower tax states, ran miles in higher tax states. When you get a refund, the opposite's true. You bought fuel in expensive, high tax states, 
You ran your miles in your low tax states. You always want to try to be getting the IFTA refund because it also means that you got a higher fuel supplement along the way. Because remember, the supplement math includes the tax that you paid. Right? So, very, yeah, you're laughing. It's very confusing. So, it, you know, common sense would say, well, I want to buy fuel in Ohio. It's cheaper. But when you actually look at the fuel supplement, you want to buy fuel in Pennsylvania, run miles in Ohio because you're maximizing your supplement at the end of the day. And you're going to get money back in IFTA. So what's our next example, Matt? Pennsylvania. Yep, the exact mirror. So you buy all your fuel in Pennsylvania, just what I said. You ran the miles in the same states here, but now you owe $50, or no. they owe you $50, sorry. They owe you $50 back in IFTA. So it's, at the end of the day, it's a net wash. You're going to pay it at the pump. You're going to pay it in IFTA, right, either way. You can't really optimize for buying fuel in low-tax states because you're going to pay it in IFTA. But you can optimize getting a higher fuel supplement by buying fuel in the high tax states. Yeah, if you go to the next slide where we put these side by side, just to illustrate it, it's the same if to tax in both cases, whether you buy in Ohio or you buy in Pennsylvania. So you're either going to pay some money or you're going to get some money back, but you end up paying in this example 171 bucks. But to Flint's point, if we assume that it was a $5 wholesale cost, you would think, oh, I'm going to go pay $547 in Ohio. That's better than paying $574 in Pennsylvania. But remember that Schedule C where they look at your average fuel cost? FedEx isn't backing out the tax. So you actually put yourself, if you buy everything in Pennsylvania, into a higher slot on that Schedule C for your fuel supplement, and you make more per mile in reimbursement. And I know there's at least one contractor that's operating between Pennsylvania and Columbus. And when they figured that out, it actually dramatically changed their P&L because they were doing those runs so often by buying the more expensive gas because it's not more expensive because it all nets out to the same tax at the end of the day. But their fuel supplement got bumped up. But it was a total counterintuitive thing to spot that for them. And they shared it with us, so we've been telling everybody now. Well, yeah. happily... We offered FedEx to come participate in this whole show, and they are. I think they sent an edict out to their entire team. No one's allowed within 100 miles of Irving this week. So, and then they didn't respond to our email. So, <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about what fuel economy can do to your P&L, because this is really interesting. If you like the what the retail numbers could be. Well, ideally, if, if I know that that contractor, if they can buy uh, fuel from the FedEx yard in Pennsylvania, that's their best fuel. Because interestingly, even with the FedEx fuel, you're better off buying in the higher tax state. Because so, well, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, as a general rule of thumb, buy in the high tax state. But where this gets really complicated is if the option is, do I buy fuel at FedEx in Ohio or at Pilot Flying J? In, uh, in Pennsylvania, right? And you're gonna eat the margin like this, this, and this is why we weren't gonna dive super deep into it because this calculation becomes very complex. You really have to look at each run, right, John? Yeah, and, and, and Flint and I are probably in the second half of this year gonna talk about trying to figure out an algorithm for an app yeah. so that you can pull it up and say, what's my net fuel cost when I bake in the fuel supplement and adjust for the tax and all that other kind of good stuff and highlight in green and red where you should be buying. Right, but I don't know, is it downloadable as an Excel, and is it current, or is it last week's? It's usually last week's, but, you know, it's probably, what, an Excel diagram that is published yeah. on that date? Yeah, it's not a, it's, yeah. it's, it's set for a week. Yeah, I, I think, I think we're going yeah, we'll to try to work on, on, on getting you those numbers. It, yeah. Or you're on a third-party program that has you really, really close to wholesale price. Because if you're going to eat the, you know, 
70 cents a gallon in margin, you're negating your, your savings. But, but again, if you're on the third party, buy it in yeah. the higher tax state. So we talked about Schedule C. This is, this is the picture of it. And again, the key point, what we're going to be talking about is you're getting paid per mile, but you buy by the gallon, right? So this is the key number. It actually goes out to like 14 decimal points when you do the math from their Schedule C, but we like to say 6.41. Matt, next slide. So this is an example of a solo truck. So we're assuming 2,100 miles driven, okay? In the middle, this is the math if it was doing 6.41 miles per gallon. That's our, our baseline, okay? So we're going to estimate the number of gallons based on the MPG. We're going to set the same wholesale price at $4.99, and we're going to work through the example. This is the cost for the fuel. This is the fuel supplement per mile. Based on the number of miles, this is the total amount of fuel supplement you get. And when you subtract what you paid from the fuel supplement, we didn't bring in the base thing here, otherwise it would be zero in this column. That's the total cost out of pocket of just the fuel cost and, and the supplement, okay? When you work it through, if you're only getting five and a half miles per gallon, you just spent 270 bucks in one week on one solo truck. And if you multiply that out, getting five and a half miles per gallon, dispatch miles per gallon, can stick you in the eye for 14 grand on one truck. The good news is if you can get seven and a half, you can make over 12 grand in fuel supplement by pushing yourself up in that direction. Does that, so, make, does that make sense? Can, you, should we go through it more carefully to, to, to understand the difference in how we got to it? Because it's just arithmetic. I'm not guessing at any of these things. This is the math from the fuel supplement. And you'll lever that up even higher Right. If you're if you're buying at FedEx hubs, if you're optimizing your price, you'll but only the impact of fuel economy, 5.5 or seven and a half is the difference in negative 14,000 on your bottom line, or positive 12,000 and some change per truck on your bottom line. So you start to paint this picture that optimizing fuel economy is a pretty darn big deal, and so you guys can take this to the next step, which is. Do I buy new trucks? Do I buy used trucks? Right? You, you can start doing this math to understand or the impact of both of those decisions. And, and a shout out to Mike Lepresti in the back. If you haven't talked to him about fuel tire savers and what they do with tire pressure and monitoring and measurement of that, I think you can do better than half a mile per gallon uh, in, in fuel economy using his system. So you may want to have a chat with him about that. Mike's just in the back if you want to wave there. Because you can see that half a mile per gallon can have a real dollar impact. Let's do the same math for 4,500 miles per week for a team truck. You could be losing this much if your economy sucks. You could be making this much. I mean, that's a, that's a truck payment, right? Yeah. You do that for I five years, it's a new truck. I think REO was, what, $34,000 or something a month for a team truck. Like, you've almost paid for a new a new team truck, right? You're over halfway there. When I talk to contractors with older fleet and I try to show them this number, they say, I can't afford new trucks. I tell them, you can't afford not to have new trucks, right? Because most of the equipment vendors, they'll talk about the traditional metrics for should I buy new or use you know, older equipment and whatnot. They don't know this, this strange FedEx thing and what it does to your P&L with the fuel supplement calcs. So they don't even bake that in. So this is typically additional money based on the other things they show you, you know, uh, warranty repairs and those kinds of things. But this is, this is actual money. I mean, it's not a hypothesis. Now, if we go to the next slide, Matt, this is across our system, all the different contractors, the fleet MPG that we see on their settlements, okay? This is the range. Remember, FedEx says 6.41, right? Generally, the bulk of contractors are doing better than that. There are some, some folks lagging with older equipment and other problems, but there's even folks up here. And, and they're probably getting actual slightly better mileage because this is including bobtailing to the shop for preventive maintenance and other things. This is just the miles that are recorded on the settlement, how we're doing the math. Okay? And we decided to take that spreadsheet I just showed you and overlay it with this. So 
centering on the bars with a team truck getting 4,500 miles, the 52-week impact to be in one of these buckets, whoever's sitting here is losing 55 grand a year in peel supplement, keeping that truck. The folks up here are making 34 and 43,000 a year on those trucks because they're getting that mileage. And these numbers are attainable. I mean, we, I know you've got customers. This is, this is real them. data. I this know, is yeah. sample from the last six months in our system yeah. and from all our customers. we're in the same boat. When we run IFTA for people, we're, there's plenty of people that are getting it. So, so if you've got trucks putting yourself here and you're saying, I can't afford to get new trucks that would get me up here, well, yeah, you can if you can get the trucks, right? Question? No. Yeah. Really, I'm really glad you brought that up. I was actually about to say this. So when, yeah, when you file IFTA, all right, so the state, so if you're, if FedEx is filing IFTA on your behalf, FedEx files IFTA on a Pennsylvania IFTA license. Well, Pennsylvania is so fed up with FedEx's huge mess that you can imagine this IFTA report with all these temp truck numbers and all this stuff going on. FedEx says if you're getting over eight miles a gallon, that's crap, and we're going to downgrade you to four miles a gallon. Something must be wrong with your data if you're getting over eight. So that means you're going to get four. And so when that happens, then FedEx gives you a big IFTA bill, right? So if you're approaching that, you have to start filing your own IFTA. That's the only, that's the only way to get around that, is file your own IFTA, get your own IFTA license, your own stickers, and, and opt out of the FedEx IFTA program. And if you're using trucks by and you're using ours, it takes you about 10 minutes a quarter. Yeah, maybe 15, but okay. yeah, to, to do the right checks and balances. But yeah, it's, it's pretty easy if you've got the data in front of you. It's not very difficult. So the, the big message that Flint and I wanted to talk about was between retail fuel and, and minimizing the loss by taking advantage of programs like, like trucks buys and RELs and fuel efficiency, you can have a major impact on your P&L. And we wanted to highlight these numbers to tell you it's not, you know, a whole lot of work to save 500 bucks a year. Like, this is one truck. Just, just look at the gaps on a team truck by just bumping yourself up half, half a gallon of fuel efficiency. You know, these are big numbers, and you need to pay, be paying attention to them because this environment's getting tougher and tougher. You can't just sort of shrug and say, I don't care. It is what it is. Flint, we've got about 10 minutes. I think this is our last slide. Yeah, so can, can we open it up for just questions, anything about what we've talked about that doesn't make sense, or are you calling BS on us? or Mike? I was going to just add a little bit of color. One is actually fuel mileage does have, or the driver actually does impact fuel economy of the vehicle. But just to keep it simple, because they talked about when they're buying new trucks, it also means you know what the miles per gallon, you know the fuel economy of each vehicle is, and then consider putting different vehicles on different routes. So your highest fuel economy truck ought to be on your longest route that you can do it. So you can figure out how to do that. That's something you could actually do to actually just increase the ROI. It, and that's a common strategy. I hear from a lot of folks that they put their newer trucks on the teams and they bring the older trucks into the solos to keep them close to the repair shops, right? Because they're going to have more brake fix type scenarios. So thank you. I hope you guys uh, continue to enjoy the, the event and continue to talk to each other and uh, get home safely. Yep. Thank you all. Thank you.